Hi and welcome back. Today we are starting module number seven, which is creating network environment. And in that we are doing a guided lab on creating a virtual private network. So in this guided lab, we learn how to create a virtual private cloud in Amazon Web Services. A VPC is your own isolated networking environment in the cloud where you can define IP address ranges, subnet routes, tables, and gateways, etc. This lab will walk you step by step through setting up a secure customized network foundation, a critical skill for deploying the AWS resources in a controlled environment. So lab overview is that traditional networking difficulties are there in order to overcome all those things. We'll be setting up a lab where we'll deploy a VPC, we'll create a public subnet we'll create a private subnet and then we'll create an internet gateway and attach it to the VPC and then we'll create an application server to test the VPC so that's the environment as you can see that we have availability zone in our Amazon Web Services Cloud we'll create a lab VPC in availability zone one public subnet is given then we have a security group for our application server and then through the internet gateway we'll be connecting to the internet and we have a private subnet which is defined over here just like always just make sure that your lab environment is ready then we'll start working on our task number one which is creating a vpc so in the starting of lab they want us to create a vpc then create a page and the name tag should be lab vpc and then ipv source uh, vs for address should be uh, slash 16 so note that thing that it is slash 16 not 24 and then we'll have to add the tags and assign the actions to our vpc settings and then at the end we'll do the dns settings and enable the host names and save this configuration so let's get started as you can see i'm on my AWS console and just like we are creating a vpc so i'm gonna type vpc here and click on this one then on your left hand side you'll click on your VPCs and you can see that there is one already available but we want to create another one so we'll create a VPC so we'll keep the default settings for VPC over here now for VPC tag we'll have to go to the lab manual and as you can see they are asking to name it as lab VPC so we'll copy it from here we'll paste the name over here then for the IP address they have already provided us so we have pasted the IP4 address over here so then we are not making any other changes to this one and we'll create a VPC now as you can see that VPC has been created it's available you can just note down some of the details over here and as you can see that under ICDR we have the association with uh, um, the addresses which is slash 16 and uh, if you'll see the flow logs there's nothing at the moment even in integrations we don't have anything since it's just a fresh VPC next they are saying go to actions and edit the vpc settings and then change the dns settings on this one so we, for that we'll click on actions and edit vpc settings and here we'll check on dns host names now why we are doing it here is we want to make sure that we'll be able to resolve the addresses either by the um, by the host name or by the ip addresses so we have forced it to resolve it through the host names as well and then we'll click save now we have accomplished that as well now they are asking us to create the subnets and uh, a subnet is a sub range of ip addresses in the vpc so aws resources can be launched into a specific subnet so we'll have to set up these things and they are giving the address for this one to creating a public subnet so these are the settings for that we'll have to define a subnet name as public subnet and then they have defined the uh, ipv4 block here as well now what's the reason of creating a public subnet the main reason of defining a public subnet is so that the resources like web servers can communicate directly to the internet through the internet gateway public subnets are essential when you want to have external access to certain resources while keeping other resources protected in private subnets so we'll copy these details and we'll start working on it now so since we are defining subnets, we'll go on our left hand side and click subnets, then click on create a subnet. 
In this one, we'll select our lab VPC. Then we'll enter the subnet name as they told us to name it as public subnet. Next step is they asked us to choose the first availability zone. So we have selected this one. And as per the instructions for IPv4 subnet details, we'll enter slash 24 and we'll create a subnet. Now, as you can see that a public subnet has been successfully created. Next is we'll have to select this one and then click on actions and select edit subnet settings. Here we'll select auto assign IP address and click save. Next step is to create a subnet of it. So we'll create a subnet by clicking on this one. So now we are creating a private subnet. So we'll name it over here. We'll first of all select our lab VPC over here. And they are giving us details for the private subnet here. Now before creating a private subnet, try to understand that what's the main reason of creating a private subnet. We are doing it to define uh, the host resources so that the database and application servers should not be directly accessible from the internet. This would add a extra layer of security by keeping the critical components isolated while still allowing the control access through the public subnets of NAT gateway. Now note one thing that our private subnet is slash 23 whereas our public subnet was slash 24. So as per the instructions for the subnet name we'll enter as private subnet. Likewise, for the availability zone, we'll select the first availability zone and here we'll type in the subnet address. Once that's done, we are not making any other changes, just create subnet. So we have successfully created a public subnet and we have created a private subnet as well. Next, they are asking to create an internet gateway. Now, why we are defining an internet gateway is that the internet gateway would allow the resources in our VPC, such as instances in a public subnet to send and receive traffic from the internet. If we'll not define a internet gateway, the VPC remains completely isolated and it won't be able to communicate with the internet. Now in order to implement it, we'll go to our console and click on internet gateway. Then click on create an internet gateway and then we'll copy the name from these instruction manual we'll paste it here not making any changes and create a gateway now since we have created it now now we'll have to attach it to our vpc so in order to do that we'll select this one and in this one we'll select our lab vpc and attach internet gateway so step number task number three is complete now they are asking us to configure the routing tables and we'll have to define the route so that we can route the traffic and uh, we'll be setting up the routing tables for our lab vpc and we'll create the name called uh, private route table and then we'll be defining some of the settings for the public route table as well so we'll note down these details and then we'll work through the console. So in order to define the routing on this one, we'll click on route tables. So here, as you can see that you cannot see your lab VPC in order to make sure that it's here, refresh it so that you can see it here. Now click on this one, rather click on this edit and name it as private route table, click save. And then scroll down and click on routes and you can see the route up here which is defined for slash 16 and click on create route table so since we have created a private route table we'll be creating a public route table here now and after that we'll select a public lab vpc and click create route table once that's done, you can see the route over here. We'll click on edit routes and we'll add a route over here. So here we'll select it for everyone. And then in this option, we'll have to select internet gateway. We'll click on this thing. And uh, in this one, we have our lab internet gateway. Select these things. Make sure that you have selected all these three options 
and then click save changes. So we have worked on our private route table and a public route table. So these steps are complete. Now they are asking about uh, uh, choosing or creating the route table that's done and then uh, target and then we have to subnet association tab and make some changes over here. So for subnet association, you can see a tab over here. Click on that one. After that, click on, you can see the, our public and private uh, subnets over here. Now in order to associate it, we'll click on edit and then we'll click on public subnet and then click on save association. And now if you'll click on subnet association, you can see that it's associated with public subnet and its address and details are appearing here. Now once that's done in task number five, they are asking us to create a security group. So the details for the security group are here like FSG, which is the security group and will allow the HTTP traffic. Now the reason of creating a security group here is so that the security group would act as a virtual firewall to our instances controlling the inbound and outbound traffic. Um, at the instance level, it would also ensure that only the right type of traffic can reach our resources. Now in order to implement security groups, we'll go under security and select security groups here. And then we'll click on create a security group. So as per the instructions, we'll name it as app SG and in description enter allow HTTP traffic. Under VPC, select your lab VPC. And then we'll define inbound rules. We'll click on this one and we want to allow it only for HTTP traffic. And then we'll select uh, it for everyone so that it is accessible to everyone. And then we'll enter the description as allow web access so that it would grant a web access to this one and then create a security group. Next on task number six, we are launching an application server in the public subnet and they are, the, they are giving details of this one that we name it as app server. And then we'll have to configure our um, instance with these names. So we'll be following these settings and finally we'll um, run a bash script on that one. For that, we'll type in EC2 instance, click on this one. Here we'll go to the instances. As you can see that there are no instances running at the moment. We'll click on this one and we'll launch an instance. Make sure that your Amazon Linux server is selected. We are not making any changes here. You'll scroll down for the key pair. We'll select walk key. Under the network settings, uh, Click edit and then select lab VPC here. Here in the subnet, we'll select public subnet. And in uh, the firewall, we'll select on select existing security group. And we'll select our app SG over here. So we are not making any other changes to configure storage. We we'll look at advanced details. Under IEM instance profile, we'll select our app role. Then we'll scroll towards the end of the page and here we'll have to copy in the script that they have provided us. So we'll copy it from here. Paste it here and then launch the instance. Once that's done, click on instances again, refresh it. Now we'll have to wait till the instance is ready. Now keep refreshing once you'll see that status check has been successfully completed and it's running. You can click on your instance and then copy the public DNS address of this one. And once you'll paste it in the address bar and press enter, you'll be able to see something similar to this one where it would say, please configure settings to connect to your database. So that's what they're talking about over here. Just make sure that uh, um, 
you'll have to wait for the checks to complete um, make sure that its status is available only then you'll be able to see the last output of it which is this one and that concludes our lab on creating a virtual private cloud that's it for today thank you very much